Well, it's Thursday, and you all know what that means. As you know, we are getting closer for Pro Wrestling Noah for their upcoming event exactly on July 13th. They just had their much recent show with more of Sunny Voyage. And of course, this one is something you don't want to miss out. This originally happened back on the 6th of July, but just recently been uploaded on Wrestle Universe. And of course, we move on with TNA. As you know, we continue to the road to Slam Anniversary. Anything could happen before then. But we do have a very interesting match that was cooked up by none other than Santino Morella. And of course, we had unexpected guests coming from NXT as well. And then of course, our final review is with the Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. We do have, of course, the world television title defended Atlantis Jr., who defeated Kyle Fletcher for this belt, defends his belt against Serpentico. We do have a proving ground match and various other things as well. And then we cap up our episode with some news updates to give you guys updates what's been happening in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are thrown out, who's booked, what matches are set, and including some developments that are happening in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Lead It Wrestle Zone. to the lead at wrestle zone all things that is pro wrestling with aew nxt new japan pro wrestling tna the national wrestling alliance various promotions wrestlers matches and championships i am your host jay right here so if you are new to the channel welcome this is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions not only here in the united states but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also, of course, do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If certain information I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video or put it on the next episode. We also, of course, do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed asap we also of course do the united siaka watch and various other cool things as well so if you like what you see please subscribe to us so click on that subscribe button you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool wrestling content as well but if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, all introductions have set aside, full speed ahead, so let's begin with our very first review, and this is coming from Japanese promotion, Pro Wrestling Noah. Okay, it's been a while. Uh, first things first, I want to apologize to all my subscribers. I missed out on a few no events, but I decided, you know, just skip those for now and try to worry what's going on as we speak. Now, this particular show is part of the Sunny Voyage Tour, and they were in Sapporo. Now, this particular event happened on the 6th of July, but it wasn't uploaded uh, until the 11th, which is today as we speak. But let's get started. Now, our first match we have Junta Miyawaki taking on He's Super and He's Crazy. Super Crazy. Yes, guys, the same Super Crazy you remember from WWE. Yeah, he's still around in case anybody asks. But it was an okay match. Now, we do know, if those who don't know this, Junta Miyawaki did study the ways of Mexican wrestling when he went to, of course, to Mexico with Ultimate Dragon. So. He learned a few things from him. But, however, uh, Super Crazy, who was the veteran in this, was able to pick up the win when he applied a crucifix. And just like that, 
it was completely over. Now our next match, we have the guys from GLG more consistently with uh, LJ clearing Anthony Green. They take on Masa Kitamiya and Daika Inaba. Now the one thing that is interesting. Now one of their much recent shows called uh, Ship Navigation Ship or something like that. Uh, uh, Jake Lee announced because he lost to Tetsuya Naito. He announced the disbandment of GLG. So this put everybody on like what? But however, Yohei and, Tada, and Tadasuke said that even if this is the end, they were willing to go all the way to the end. So that is a good thing. But how is the other's mindset? I'm talking about mostly Jack Morris, who recently has not been in contact with the other members. I think he's probably still pissed about it, but we'll see. But uh, Elgin Cleary in Anthony's green mindset, I don't know how it is. But however, uh, it was Kiramiya who picked up the win when he applied his submission onto LJ Clearing, and just like that, it was over. Oh, excuse me. Now, our next match is a showdown between two brothers. Former uh, uh, GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Champions were talking about Alpha Wolf taking on his brother, Dragon Bane. So now, we have seen, of course, brother versus brother on certain occasions, but nothing big like we saw with, of course, with Dusty and his brother, Cody, or the Usos, that sort of thing. But nonetheless, these guys are not afraid to to go at it each other. We've seen that with the Lucha Brothers as well when they faced off each other. But it was Dragon Bane with the Poison Rana that sealed the deal for him to pick up the win. Now our next match, we have the other members of GOG, Tadasuke, Yohei, and Jake Lee. They take on Eita, Hayata, and of course the genius of the arc, Naomichi Marifuji. Now things were going well throughout the entirety of the match. But however, Hayata, as you know, has, a, has an enemy lurking around. And that enemy is Ulka Zazaki, who in fact has issued a challenge to him for the GHC National Championship. He showed up out of the blue, choking out Hayata. Even Eita tried to stop him, but uh, of course he did let him go. But Zaki does not like the fact that this map that he got in the way, because you know he and Hayata are very good friends. But the match was thrown out as a you no know, contest, and of course GLG, they're like telling now Michiru Fuji, look, the match is over. We had nothing to do with this. So this was the actions of one person. So that says it all. Now our next match, we have Amasuke teaming up with Takashi Sugiura to take on Daga and Elijo the Dr. Wagner Jr. Now, when Amasuke returned, he issued the challenge to Daga. So Daga will definitely try to show him that no one is going to take his kingdom no matter what. And that's exactly what this match was about. It's for Amasuke who actually needs to win in order to be, uh, defeat him for the GHC Junior Heavyweight title. But unfortunately... Uh, Asuna got a preview of what's going to happen when they cross paths, when he applied the Diablo Wings, and just like that, it was over. Our next match, we have the an eight-man ta uh, tag match. <sighs> Excuse me. We have all rebellion consisting of Cristobal, Alejandro, Keno, and Keito Kiyomiya taking on Yu Owada, Rohi Oiwa, Uska Zazaki, and of course, the challenger for the GHC heavyweight title, uh, Yochi. Now, Yochi made his return when, of course, Kiyomiya, Kiyomiya actually def uh, defended the GHC heavyweight title against Gabe Kidd. And now, they're going to duke it out. So, you probably see preview on this one, but in fact, it was Kiyomiya who picked up the win when he applied the Shining Wizard onto Oiwa, winning the match. But however, Yochi, um, Yochi and Kiyomiya went at it, and then of course his, uh, Hayata decided to get a little measure of revenge on Sazaki for what we did, so everything went all chaotic. But I know Kiy Kiyomiya will not let this whole thing go down. Ryochi tried to defeat him for the belt. So we'll see what happens until we get there. But as right now, we end things with Noah. Don't forget they will be having their next show on July 13th, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We do have, of course, AJ Styles being there. So, until then, let's just move on with our next review, and that is, I believe, TNA.
Okay, TNA. Now, as you know what would happen after we left off, we did see Moose was telling Johnny Dango Curtis of what happened. As you remember, we did saw him, he attacked Mike Santana. Moose thought in his mind that he took out Nick Mendes, but Curtis t told him he had nothing to do with it. It was Mike Santana. So the obvious question, who was it? We did see Frank Kazarian there, and that's when the question began, was it him? Well, it turned out it was because Ryan Menace decided to confront him until his big brother, Nick, decided to get in his face. So it's now been clear it was Frankie because Frankie would stop at nothing, nothing that would stand in his way to obtain the TNA world title, even if Moose is also in the same team, uh, even if Moose is the champion. So we'll see what happens. Now we do see a open challenge of the TNA Knockouts World Title. We have Jordan Grace defend the belt against a, a someone who answered the call, and this one is coming from NXT, Izzy Dame, until that dumbass of a Scrooge showed up. That's right. Ash by Elegance Stooge showed up, you know, saying, oh, she's on vacation, she's going to watch this, you know. I don't think Jordan Grace is too bothered because I think the problem is she thinks that going on vacation is going to help her win the TNA Knockouts World Cup. But, however, we you saw the size dif uh, differences with Izzy and Jordan. Well, we know Izzy's a bit more taller than Jordan, but Jordan has a much bigger heart and much better strength. And it was, of course, the nut juggernaut driver that sealed the deal. But the actual question is, will, of course, um, Ash by Elegant gets the message because she thinks she will walk away from it. Now, Santino Morella, as you know, had something cooked up. And it turned out he had this thing for the main event for a wild card match. And it's going to be, of course, involving the competitors of the TNA world title that's consistent of Moose. Frankie Kazarian, uh, Joe Hendry, Josh Alexander, um, Steve Macklin, and Nick Menneth. So the matches were set. Uh, Josh Alexander will team up with Joe Hendry. And of course, we have Macklin teaming up with Moose. So that's our main event. Now our next match, we have, of course, Zachary Wentz versus Charlie Dempsey. Now remember, Dempsey showed up out of the blue, no out of nowhere, attacked, of course, uh, Miguel and Leon Slater uh, on this, and then of course this was going to happen. But however, wherever uh, Dempsey goes, that's where of course uh, no court, no court, uh, no court or catch crew will show up. Miles Bourne showed up and handled business, took out uh, Trey Miguel, but it was of course Charlie Dempsey with the of course suplex, allowing himself to win the match, and then of course. There was a beatdown by no quarter catch crew, so that kind of ended right there. Now, of course, the system are basically happy with the results of what Johnny Dango Curtis did. And then, of course, Moose talked about his match later on with, with Macklin. So, of course, they tell him to trust the system, but sooner or later, the system is going to crack. Now, of course, uh, no quarter catch crew, we did see how happy they were, of course. Tavion Heights was there, but however, Santino decided that next week it's going to be all members of No Court's Catch Crew against the Rascals and a partner of their choosing. So there are those that speculate it could be Wes Lee, but we'll just have to wait and see. I think many of us would like to see it's Wes Lee. Now, our next match is a number one contendership for the X Division title. Now, this was supposed to be a match that, of course, Mustafa Ali was crying about. He felt that Mike Bailey didn't deserve it, so Santino decided, I'm going to give him a, an opportunity to earn it. And that's not what Mustafa wanted. He wanted, he does not deserve a title. He doesn't get a title. He doesn't want him at all. But it ended with a match with Kushida versus Gresham and Bailey. Now, of course, the factor is this. Kushida and, and Gresham. We have seen Gresham was applying the black ink multiple times. But however, he was so close in doing it again to Kushida. But Kushida found the answer to that. And that answer is he spit out the green mist. But however, he had Gresham right where he wanted him until 
Bailey applied the ultimate weapon and just like that painting Gresham allowing himself to win the match and then Mustafa Ali being the lowest scum of the earth sent his so-called security ser secret service to attack Bailey try to wipe him out Trent Seven even tried to intercept but it was too much but this, instead Mustafa Ali dismantled Trent Seven right against Mike Bailey to show him that consequences have action he thinks that Bailey had no intent had no right to challenge for the X division that he didn't deserve it he didn't earn it he had no business but come to Montreal where it's in fact Mike Bailey country well let's see what happens now as you know we did see Giselle Shaw back as you know she is trying to get back into her roots to pick up her winning ways now under the guidance of Gail Kim TNA Hall of Famer she faces against Tasha Steele now Tasha Steele wasted no time immediately attacked Giselle Shaw but of course Giselle Shaw I was impressed by this match because she has in fact brought something new to the table and, I, and you saw the reaction with R Renwall he was surprised too but however it was a devastating knee strike that put it away and just like that it was over now we did see uh, Zia Brooke uh, Zia getting an interview with Gia Miller. Of course, two things. She wants to get her hands on Alicia Edwards for what happened last time when she was facing Masa Slavich and all that. But she did give information that, of course, of Steph DeLanders. We all know what's going on right there in that picture, but we'll see what happened. Now, our next match is, is that scumbag Johnny Dango Curtis taking on Chris Bay. Now, of course, the system was going to be there. They were going to get involved. But, of course, uh, JDX got away with it by winning the match and then beating down the ABC. As you know, the ABC are determined to reclaim their tag titles, which, of course, the system were not going to let that happen. But if I'm JDX, I will watch out my back because Mike Santana will come after him and he's going to make him pay. So I'm sure JDX thinks he got away with it. But he's not going to get away with a beatdown once Santana gets to him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets to him at Slammiversary and makes him bleed. Now, our, now we did have a, T, a TNA Digital Media Championship. I might have skipped that one. It's my bad. Uh, it was supposed to be Rhino versus AJ Francis. But this match ended in a no DQ. All thanks to Sean to Rick Swan, but Santa, uh, Santino did not like what happened. So since we they were in Philadelphia, let's turn it into a Philly street fight. Now, of course, this was the element of of Rhino, but AJ Francis low blowed Rhino to pick up the win. Then PCO showed up in the post match, but we'll see what happens because PCO will face AJ Francis for the belt, and of course AJ Francis thinks he'll walk out with it. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, our main event, of course, is the wild card tag match. Joe Hendry and Josh Alexander taking on Macklin and Moose. But that so-called king, or should I say the false king, Frank Kazarian showed up and ended up on the commentary. But, of course, he was going to get involved. He, he does not want nobody like uh, anybody to get their hands on the title because he felt he should get it. So we'll see. But apparently costing Alexander Hendry the match. And things went out of hand. But however, of course, Macklin may have won this match. You know he wants to dismantle Moose. So, that I don't know because Moose thinks it's only one person it's a problem. But there's plenty others. So, we'll see what happens until then. So, right now we are done with TNA. Let's move on with our last review, Ring of Honor. Okay, Ring of Honor, ROH, opened up with a three-way match. Robin Renegade, uh, Marina Shafir, and Tail Valkyrie. So this is a very interesting combination of a three-way match. All these ladies have played heels, so kind of like you ask yourselves, which one is going to be the one on top? Well, smart money for me when I saw this, I was thinking Marina Shafir. We know she has been on a roll recently you know winning good um, winning matches whether it's with against enhancements or other wrestlers but however 
it was Tail Valkyrie who actually picked up the win when she applied the curse stomp onto Robin Renegade, allowing herself to pick up the win. Now, as you know, we are getting close to the upcoming pay Ring of Honor pay-per-view, Death Before Dishonor. However, there is a particular tag team that has been on the record losing all the time, and that is Bennett and Taven. So, as you know, they've been begging for a long time. Give them better competition. Well, so far, nothing like that happened, but they have been considering maybe taking some time off. Maybe to avoid the curse of losing at death before dishonor. I mean, yeah, it makes perfect sense, but sooner or later, they're going to get dragged into it. But we'll see. Now, our next match is the ROH World Television title. As you know, not too long ago, Atlantis Jr. defeated Kyle Fletcher for this belt. And now he's coming into Ring of Honor ring for the first time to take on Serpentico. Of course, there were some good moments we saw with Serpentico pick up the match. But of course, this was not going to end with him winning. It was Atlantis who picked up the win when he applied the frog splash. And just like that, it was over. Our next match, we have Sky Blue versus uh, Laney Luck. Well, I can tell you that this match did end it with Sky Blue when she applied the Code Blue and just like that. Now, we did get another video package from MXM consisting of Mansoor and, of course, Mason Madden. Now, we do know recently I did report it that uh, they, are, they signed some deals with AEW and Ring of Honor, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they become the tag team challengers for the ROH titles, but we'll see. Tag team titles, so we'll see. Our next match is a proving ground match for the ROH Women's World Television title. Billy Starks versus Mackenzie Morgan. Now, things were going well throughout the entire match, but for some odd reason, Athena knocked out Morgan, uh, Morgan and then, of course, uh, Billy Starks applied the submission, allowing herself to pick up the win. Now, our ne next match, we have Diamante. As you know, this is a bit of a, how do I say, message to Layla Hirsch because they will be in a street fight at a death before dishonor. They, she faces again next, and then she applied an armbar. An armbar, of course, we have seen Layla Hirsch applied many times over. So, of course, Diamante won in that fashion, but we will see. Now, of course, Athena, as you know, uh, she was with the Minions and Billy to take care of some business, and then she hurt herself ankle. Now, Ian Riccoboni doesn't buy it the way she sold it off. We know that the problem is this. Athena has no intentions of giving up her ROH title. So the obvious thing is this. If she is going to be gone for a long time, then ROH has no other choice but to strip the belt off of her to find a suitable champion while she's out, which Athena's not going to have. But we have seen moments. Now, there is one thing that will bring back memories for me. If you guys remember, many years ago, J.J. Dillon was like the commissioner of WCW. He was threatening, of course, Scott Steiner, who was injured, and he got up from his bed with the little oxygen thingy, and he was fine. So I wouldn't be surprised if something like that has happened. Now, our next match, our main event, is Lee Johnson at, teaming up with the infantry, Carly Bravo, and the captain, Sean Dean, to take on all members of the Dark Order, Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. Now, we have seen the Dark Order. They do have great combinations, but we have seen a few times Lee Johnson in the infantry actually can get along great, even though uh, Lee Johnson stands on his own, but I think he doesn't mind having them around. But it was Lee Johnson that picked up the win for his team when he applied the Frog Splash onto, uh, onto Uno, and just like that, it was over. So I think that's pretty much it. What we have for... ROH. I think it's time to end uh, end this with, of course, some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So. Let's begin with upcoming events from the promotions. Now we got some GCW stuff for all of you. Now, as you know, on the 18th of July, they will be in 
Louisville for, uh, so, uh, believe me, we have Shane Mercer will take on uh, Nate Webb. And then the following day, they make their way to St. Louis, where we're going to see the team up between Joey Janela and Megan Bain, better known as now, Genelisis. They take on Blake Christian and Shane Mercer. Now, in this, between here and uh, between that and, the, and later on before Homecoming and all this and their Japanese show, there's going to be a pick your poison type matches in that. Now, remember, there is going to be a title for the for the GCW world title on the line. So there's going to be the pick your poison events. Now, Blake, um, Mance Warner and Joey Janela will have their pick your poisons happen in um, in Cleveland for the Now and Forever show on the 2nd of August. As for Blake Christian, he'll happen on the 4th of August for Can You Trust Me in Asbury Park. Now, of course, we have more information on their Japanese tour coming up. Marcus Mathers will be joining them there, and I think this is his first time. Now, uh, House of Glory has announced for the high-intensity event that will happen on the 28th of July. Uh, Kevin Knight will be making his debut, so it's pretty good. Now, Deadlock Pro Wrestling has announced for another match for the High Noon event that will take place on August 18th. Well, they announced that the DPW World Tag Team titles will defend it. The current champions, Mike Speedball Bailey, will, and of course his tag partner, Jake Something, will defend it against the ABC. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Now for some interesting developments going on. Now, as you may or may not have heard, the of course, the match between Julia and Suri, it will now take B4 the Mighty Gold World Championship. This is something that Suri thinks it should happen. So it was more like, why not? So we'll see where that goes from here. Now, you may have saw what happened this past Wednesday in Calgary with AEW with Samoa Joe. As you saw that he was taken away by an ambulance, well, it was revealed by PW Insider that he's been written off from television for a specific reason. He'll be out of action only because he needs to be, he will be involved for the second season of Twisted Metal. Well, you guys know who is he going to play. He's going to play the clown, as always. So that's going to be fun. Now, many of you saw this little vignette of some unknown wrestler. Well, Body Slam kind of gave away the the identity of this wrestler. But, however, it was a wrestling observer that confirmed it. So, basically, that person is Aramis. But, unfortunately, he will not go by that name. He has a new name that he'll go, and he'll be making his debut soon enough. Now, uh, Suri talked about how much she wanted to face against EO Sky. So basically, as you know, they met back when uh, Suri was still in WWE as Saray at the time. So she wants to have a match with her. Now, it's no secret that maybe we could see more of that maybe EO Sky will make more returns to Japan to participate and that sort of thing. But uh, we'll see. But we'll see what's going to happen down the road. Now, as you know, we are now in that time of year. If you guys know this, I keep mentioning this all the time. I'm from San Diego, California, and we have one major event that happens on this month of July, and that is San Diego Comic Con. Now, PW Insider, that there's going to be an AEW panel. Yeah, that's right, guys. There's an AEW panel taking place. So I don't know if any of my subscribers will be coming for the, for Comic Con here in San Diego, and it was told that they will have and uh, they will be at the uh, DC booth doing uh, I think autograph session. I don't know, but here's the participants involved. We do have of course a uh, Swerve Strickland, Will Osprey, Orange Cassidy, Tony Storm, Darby Allen, and Britt Baker. So they are the participants. However, there's been talks about a free show that does not require a badge so it could be somewhere the outside uh, I'll get more information on that as we go now regarding of comic-con we do know that two more names have been announced but they're not affiliated with AEW uh, that is of course Shelton Benjamin and of course he's very nice and very evil Dan Housen so he will they will be there uh, the booths will be none other than headlock comics and uh, mask Republic so uh, Hopefully, I get the chance to see those guys. So, yeah. Now, Cody Rhodes mentioned that he would like to have a potential match with the genius of the arc, now Michi Marifuji. I, will, I like the idea. So, what do you guys think? Should he have a shot of him? We'll see. 
Uh, Yuna Manaze, uh, someone who I mentioned a couple of times, who is responsible for training uh, some of the y Yoshi wrestlers we like, like Tam Nakano, Natsupoi, Sayuru Inoue, uh, Unagi. Well, uh, she's going to be coming to the U.S. Uh, next month. So I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited. Now, Mariah May spoken to Sports Entertainment about, as you know, for the Wembley Stadium. She said that she'll have her mom in the front row so she can see her win the title, but at the same time, destroy Tony Storm. Now, I will do a, a bit of a small discussion video. Some people are kind of adamant about how the situation with Mariah May went down after defeating Tony Storm. That, I think many of you guys are going to like this idea because something was genius. But I'll get to that at some point. But as of right now, we'll end things here. So, let's just call it a day. Okay. I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. As you know, we have AEW Rampage and NXT. However, uh, there is another Stardom show happening as we speak. Hopefully, I get the chance to review it. That is something I am looking forward to it. I was originally going to also review uh, for this episode, but I did not have time. Uh, Pro Wrestling Zero One. So, we'll see what happens. If I have time, I'll add that. And we'll go from there. But as of right now, we'll end thing, leave things as it is. So, until then, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.